Today, I'll be answering some of the most common questions people have about money, from investing and saving to debt management and financial planning. We have got a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. What's the best way to pay off debt? First things first, you're never going to get rid of debt if you don't take some time to understand how you got there. That's the first step. People think that just coming up with an amount of money and a payment plan will solve their problem, but that's technically not true. You will most likely go back into debt if you don't change your spending behavior to avoid making the same mistakes. Now, regarding the strategy you can use to pay off your debt in terms of which bills you're going to pay first, there are several effective strategies, but two of the most popular ones are the debt snowball and the debt avalanche methods. For both of them, you need to know who you owe, the amount owed, the interest rate, and the minimum payment due. The debt snowball method involves paying off your smallest debt first. So if you have a $5,000 credit card debt and an $8,000 car loan, you're going to tackle the credit card debt first because it will be faster to pay off. You will make progress quickly and this will give you the motivation to keep going. Now, if you're not here for the motivation, you just want to know what mathematically makes more sense, then the debt avalanche method might work best for you because it focuses on paying off debts with the highest interest rates first. So let's say that if you have a debt with 22% interest rate and another with a 7% interest rate, you're going to focus on paying off the 22% first because over time you're going to save a lot of money on those interest payments. Choose the method that best suits your personality and financial situation and don't forget that regardless of which strategy you use, you have to keep making the minimum payment on all your balances. How do I start investing with little money? If you're a beginner looking to start investing, consider a low cost index fund. An index fund is a type of mutual fund or ETF designed to mirror the performance of a specific market index like the S&P 500. Here's why this is the smartest move you can make. Index funds offer instant diversification. So instead of using your $20 to invest in a single company, you are spreading your investment across hundreds of companies. And this diversification reduces risk because the performance of your investment isn't dependent on just one company. Index funds also come with super low fees compared to other types of funds because they don't need a manager to try and usually fail to beat the market. This means that more of your money stays invested and working for you. Plus, they make investing easy. You simply open a brokerage account, you pick a low-cost index fund, automate your contributions, and watch your money grow. It's simple, effective, and proven. Here are some examples of funds that you could consider. There is a total stock market index fund that replicates the performance of the entire U.S. stock market. There is a fund that tracks the S&P 500 index, which includes 500 of the largest American companies. There are funds that provide exposure to markets outside of the U.S., diversifying your portfolio globally. There are funds that track bond indexes and can provide stability and income. And you could also consider funds that focus on specific sectors like technology or healthcare. And there's even funds that focus on companies with a history of growing their dividends. What's the difference between a 401k, a Roth IRA, and a traditional IRA? These are American retirement accounts created to encourage people to save for the long term, and they offer tax advantages as a bonus. A 401k is an employer-sponsored retirement plan, meaning that you can only open one through your job. You contribute money directly through payroll before your income is taxed, which reduces your taxable income for that year, and you will only pay taxes on your contributions and the growth of your investment when you withdraw the money later during retirement. A nice perk of a 401k is that many employers will match your contributions. And if that's your case and your employer offers a match, you should consider enrolling because those match contributions are essentially free money. A Roth IRA and a traditional IRA are accounts that can be open independently. You don't need an employer. The main difference between these two is how and when you get 
about tax advantages. A traditional RA is similar to a 401k in that you don't pay taxes on the money you contribute until you withdraw it in retirement. The contributions you make now also reduce your taxable income. A Roth RA works the opposite way. You pay taxes on your contributions now, but when you retire, all the money in the account is tax-free, including the growth in your investment. If you expect to be in a higher tax bracket in retirement than you are now, a Roth RA may be the best option for you. This way you pay taxes at a lower rate while you are in a lower tax bracket and enjoy tax-free withdrawals later when you retire. Will investing in the stock market make me rich? Let's cut to the chase. If you're asking, will I get rich quickly by investing in stocks? The answer is no. But if you're asking, can I build significant wealth over time by investing in the stock market? The answer is absolutely yes. Let me explain. I wouldn't rely solely on the market as a strategy for quick riches because investing is 100% a long-term gain. Trying to predict when the stock market will rise or fall in order to buy low and sell high is nearly impossible. That's why it's often called a fool's game. If your goal is to have multiple million dollars in your bank account within the next 5, 10, or 15 years, there are probably better options than the stock market. So why invest at all? Well, you would invest because the market is a tool for generating income and preserving wealth over time. This can be achieved through dividends, interest payments, and the increase in the value of the shares you buy. However, several factors play into this, and one important factor is called compound interest. Compound interest is the concept of earning interest on your investment and then also earning interest on the interest that has already been added to your investment. It's like a snowball effect. The longer you let it roll, the bigger it gets. And this is why all financial professionals urge you to start investing early. Look at this graph. To generate it, I told the calculator that I started with an initial investment of $1,000. For the next four years, I planned to make monthly contributions at $700, assuming a 6% inflation adjusted rate of return. If you examine the graph closely, you will see that at this pace, I will only reach half a million dollars after 24 years of investing. What can we learn from this. First, in the short term, most people don't become wealthy by investing in the markets because the power of compound interest is most effective after many years of accumulating wealth. And second, compound interest works best with larger sums of money. Can you see how the earnings exponentially grow after you have a significant amount in the account? It took 24 years to reach $500,000, but from there, it takes only eight years to reach a million dollars. You see how it goes, money makes money. So if you like to build wealth and get rich faster instead of working 40 years to retire and then enjoy the results of compound interest, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that, maybe the question that you should be asking yourself is, how can I explore ways to generate value and increase my income now to then pour this wealth into instruments like the market. How much should I be saving for retirement at my age? The exact amount you should be saving for retirement can vary based on your age, income, and retirement goals. So the best way to approach this is to use a retirement calculator. You can find many options online, or you can use the same one that I will be using, which I will leave the link below. Essentially, to use a calculator, you will need to provide some basic information about yourself. So first, enter your current age, the age that you plan to retire, and your investment style. The calculator will ask you for your investment style to estimate the annual return on your investment. And next, you're going to input your annual household income, how much you have saved for retirement so far, and how much you plan to contribute saving each year. The calculator will also ask if you want to include your social security benefit and any other supplemental income that you expect to receive. And lastly, it asks you to estimate your retirement spending. So that means that when you retire, would you like to have access to less, the same, 
or more than what you currently own. This can be entered as a dollar amount or as a percentage of your current income. So for example, since you likely have more debt and responsibilities now than you will in retirement, you might use a lower percentage such as 75% of your current income. And after entering all this information, the calculator will show you whether you are on track to meet your retirement goals. So based on the information I use, it indicates that I am on track. However, let's change some numbers. So suppose I want to retire at 62 instead. Well, in that case, I won't have enough money and will need to make some adjustments. So it suggests changing my retirement age to 63. It also says that I could increase my contribution to retirement to $10,700 a year, almost $900 a month, or I could consider reducing my spending while in retirement. You can play around with these types of calculators to help with your planning. They are free. All you need is internet access. There you have it. That was the last question. Thank you for having me. And let me know if you like a part two of this and what questions you would like me to answer next time. Bye.